Hello everyone, my name is Sevlod Nikitin. I'm the pre-sales and after-sales director at Medvision Europe. In this video, I would like to show you the endoscopy simulator and division. Endovision is an all-in-one platform uh, that can be purchased in different options. So for example, uh, this one is a three-in-one simulator where we have gastroscopy, colonoscopy, and bronchoscopy. They can be purchased separately, the instruments and the modules, or you can have a two-in-one or again separately. So here we have a unibody design on a mobile platform, which makes it very convenient for simulation centers. And two monitors up top, uh, anti-glare coating, full HD, non-touch screen, touch screen with uh, menu controls optimized for this. And as you can see, very similar to other MedVision de um, designs. And here we have the main uh, compartment where the feedback system is located. All of our simulators, of course, have feedback systems of different designs that best suit this kind of surgery. And here in the smaller one, we have the PC, access to which is on the back. Of course, you can connect keyboards and mice. and. Uh, two pedals for uh, operation here as well. Let's have a closer look at the instrument cluster on the side of the simulator. I'm gonna release the holder on the bottom and let's have a closer look. Let's have a closer look left to right. So here we have our on and off switch, our height adjustment buttons and a holder for our instruments. So uh, we have the bronchoscope, gastroscope and colonoscope. Uh, further, we have the universal instrument imitator and a syringe imitator. So what we believe is important to note here is that these are exact imitations of real instruments. However, these parts, the uh, flexible parts of the instruments are taken from real ones so that the behavior of those is completely realistic. Let's have a look at the actual operation of the simulator. In my hands, I'm holding a bronchoscope for the purpose of this demo. Um, what we wanna talk about is, of course, as you remember, this is an exact imitation of a real instrument, but this, um, the flexible part has been taken from a real instrument. So all of the techniques and methods that you would normally use in real life are, of course, possible here as well. So uh, the first thing I would like to talk about is when you are introducing the instrument into the uh, universal port right here, uh, there is a little trick to it because there is inside a fixator that will uh, grab the um, flexible part when you're inserting it. Uh, you gotta be careful uh, when you are inserting and removing the instrument. So here I am inserting and I can hear an audible opening of the fixator. What you can do is you can push it uh, further a little bit and then try to pull it out and you'll see if it's holding it. Well, right now it isn't. So I, I, should, have, have, I should have pushed it a little further like this, there we go. So um, this here, everything will be familiar. Um, and also what we would like to talk about is the uh, feedback system, because here, as with all of our surgical simulators, we have a very realistic system of feedback that will give you in real time, uh, realistic responses uh, that will, um, in, in response to your actions. Removal of the instrument, uh, always of course be very gentle when operating the um, flexible parts of the instrument. Uh, when you are removing, pull it out gently and at some point you'll feel a slight resistance. This is where the holder is holding the instrument. So what you have to do is you have to push it back further a little bit, like I'm doing right now, and it's going to release it completely. Uh, one of the interesting features we have in our Endovision simulator is um, the audio cues that you would be getting if you are uh, too rough when operating your instruments. So um, we'll try to show it to you a little later in this video. So um, if you are too rough, if you are going too fast or removing the instrument or generally uh, doing something wrong when operating the instrument, simulated virtual patient will start uh, giving you audio cues, screaming. Uh, and uh, if the software deems you are being too rough on the instrument, the session will be terminated with an error message. Finishing up with the instruments, let's uh, talk real quick about the universal instrument imitator. It has a flexible metal part, as you can see, and you would be introducing it at the base of the instrument. In my case, it's the bronchoscope. So you will be introducing it until you see it on the screen. Might take almost all of the length of this part. So just a second. We should be able to see it on screen any second now. 
And you would use this to operate instruments like the biopsy graspers, for example, as you can see, it responds to me opening and closing the instrument. Uh, and there are also, of course, statistics for operating this one. So for example, how quick, how caref careful you were. And they are flexible on, on the screen virtually as well. So they will uh, repeat, so to speak, all the curves of the anatomy. And the last thing is the syringe emulator, as you can see, pretty simple. Open it up, just a second. Place it in there and do the injection, and that's it. You'll see some liquid coming out of the um, uh, bronchoscope. Naturally, MedVision as a simulator manufacturer is keeping up to date with latest techniques and developments in, uh, in this case, endoscopy, diagnostics, and simulation. And we would like to have a closer look at the software interface and how to work with the simulator on the example of eBus TBNA uh, module. Uh, and uh, I will do a little bit of um, operation of the simulator, and while I do it, we'll talk about different controls. So we spoke before about introduction and removal of the instrument. So uh, also what I want to say is that this interface here mimics the one of a real device, and I will gently start working with the simulator. So handle rotation and all of the controls are exactly like they are with a real simulator, and we pride ourselves on the quality uh, and fidelity of the graphics that we see here. So I am going to get to the correct area. Might not be doing it exactly perfectly, but I only try and learn. So there we go. For example, I've positioned myself. I can press a button to uh, wash the camera a little bit. Um, here on the right hand side, uh, I have my controls. Uh, here in this section, we have the virtual instrument selection, and uh, bottom left corner is the sound volume. Uh, moving a bit more to the right to the central area, you have your tabs here, exactly like you would in your browser, for example. And here I have a CT image of the patient, and I can uh, scroll through different frames here. I can switch to ultrasound controls, and important to note that with ultrasound controls, um, so with, with most of our simulators, some of the virtual things will be here on the touch screen. Um, a clinical case description and a description of the module. Uh, just like with lab vision, for example, or angio vision, we have video tutorials and you press here uh, to go and have a look at how this module should be uh, performed. And uh, importantly, you can do uh, full screen mode, for example, and you can minimize. Let me stop this. And uh, I'm going to press bottom right corner virtual tips and you will see here in the bottom left corner a map appear which will help you navigate with your anatomy. Also uh, when you press virtual tips you might get some uh, pop-up messages here saying what you have to do. So I will uh, now close uh, exit the uh, module by pressing exit in the top right hand corner and let me remove the instrument gently now. Just a second. There we go. Uh, just like with all of our surgical simulators, you get the uh, detailed report in the same format. They're always the same. Uh, you can have a look at how you performed here. Export, print statistics, next exercise, back to main menu. So this is exactly what I'm going to press, back to main menu. Uh, we would like to note that with our video of lab vision standard simulator, because our simulators are very similar in the philosophy in development and design is exactly the same. If you want to see some more tips and tricks on how to use the simulator, please go and have a look at the lab vision simulator video. Uh, here, going back to the menu, uh, pretty standard throughout all of our simulators. First tabs will always correspond to the uh, training modules sections. So bronchoscopy, upper GI, lower GI, and then training courses. Training courses are exactly like with lab vision again. Um, a sequence of training modules, and if you launch a training course, you either have to complete it or you have to terminate it. And I'm going to go in here, and you can see that you can edit, uh, create, delete courses. So uh, this is your powerful tool for creating curriculums. I'm going to go back to the menu now. Statistics are all of your reports, if you have been done any, because this is a demo simulator. We don't record anything. Oh, oh actually, they loaded up. Let's give it a second. Oh, they're there. It's just a lot of them, actually, with this one. So um, 
teaching materials are usually videos. And just like with a uh, lab vision simulator, again, uh, you have actual surgery recordings and you have software module recordings performed by our employees. Let me go back here. And additional settings, because we are in service mode, uh, if you go back to the uh, user selection and type in a code that will be provided to your service engineer, you can go to the additional settings database management, monitor settings. Again, this one is none touch. This is a touch screen, so this one has to be the main one. And we talked about uh, monitor um, configuration in another video. I think we will put it a little later into this video as well because it's important. And then calibration. Again, very straightforward, and this is oriented towards ease of use for your uh, technicians at your simulation center, or you can even do it yourself. Uh, and it is reading what it says on the button. So for example, take the endos endoscope out of the port. You do this, you press it, lights up in green, done, calibrated. And follow the instructions, for example, close the biopsy forceps and press the button. That's all you have to do, and then press here. This will show you the value of the parameter that you're calibrating here as well, so that you know it's picking up. And you go through your different tabs, so general uh, calibration settings, bronchoscopy, gastroscope, uh, colonoscope, and here is where you calibrate. After you're done, you press finish calibration, or if you want to reset the factory settings, you do it here. Of course, all simulators come pre-calibrated, but during transportation sometimes, or after, for example, a Windows update, a recalibration is required, and it's very simple to do in this simulator. In our training modules, we also have different anatomies, and these can be updated online. So to get an online update of your modules, uh, go out into the Windows, enable TeamViewer, and either our software engineer will do a remote update, or uh, in the future, I think we'll implement an auto-update feature where you just have to connect to internet, and it will do so automatically. So depending on the time of you watching this video, it might al already be in place. So uh, I'm gonna show the example of uh, different uh, modules, for example, on, again, TBNA. So eBus TBNA, I'm gonna go in here, uh, a description of what it is, and then here is where you choose your clinical cases. They all will have their medical history. For example, uh, 11L lymph node group enlargement, a male patient 60, uh, 46 years old, a female patient 49, male patient 62, and a male patient 52 years old. Uh, one important thing to note is that, of course, all the um, clinical cases are, are based on real uh, depersonified people data patient data, and uh, everything is done as realistic as it can be. So our software engineers meticulously studied the videos, and uh, we work with key opinion leaders all over the world to bring you the best experience. And the last one, a very important setting, uh, monitor settings. So sometimes after transportation, after a Windows update, or something else, uh, monitors might get mixed up. So because they have specific numbers, so for example, the touch screen is a number one and the second monitor up top is number two, uh, and after an update they are mixed up or vice versa, uh, you wanna go to this setting and either connect a mouse and click or click with your finger, and they will be as they should be because the menu is on the right monitor always because it's a touch screen. Thank you for watching. Uh, this and many other videos about MedVision simulators can be found on our Instagram, YouTube channel, and on our website. See you in a live demo.